The first step when it comes to throwing a cylinder on the wheel is to center. When you center, you want to make sure that you have a round ball of clay. Make it as symmetrical as you can get it. Once you have that ball of clay, throw it down to the center of the wheel using the rings to help guide you. If there's an overlap or it's not as symmetrical, adjust it as necessary. After adjusting, tap center it all the way around. Slow your wheel down at its slowest speed and smack it on both sides with both hands. This will help to make it more symmetrical. Next, take your index finger and press it where the clay and the wheel head meet. This will ensure that no water gets underneath. Now it's time to add some water. Water and friction produces slip, which will help the clay to slide through your hands. As we go through the process of centering, cone up by pressing both of your hands on the outside of the clay, really moving the clay. Pressing on the sides will make our clay move in one direction, up. Next we're going to bring it down, so our left hand will be on the outside, our right hand on top, pressing down, bringing it to the shape that will be easiest for us to throw a cylinder with. You may want to repeat the coning process a few times. Notice how my hands press forward a little bit and then start to work the clay down. Always anchor your arms into your body. This will ensure that the clay stays centered and the clay is not moving you, you are the one moving the clay. Now that my clay is centered, it's time for the next step. Open. Using my wooden rib, I draw a little button on top of my clay. This ensures I know where to open. When opening, rest your left hand on the outside. Use your left thumb, your right index finger, and your right middle finger to create a V shape into the clay. Now that we've opened, it's time to claw. Hook those same fingers and pull back towards you. The goal is to create an even flat base at the same depth that we opened. Claw out wide enough that your throwing sponge can sit at the base. This ensures our hands can fit in while we're working. Our next step is to compress. Take your wooden rib with the right angle on the right side. Holding it with two hands, press that right angle into the three o'clock position of your clay. This will create a flat base with a 90 degree angle. Compressing prevents cracking, a common issue in beginning ceramics. Now that you've compressed, let's troubleshoot something that might be happening to you. If your clay is no longer centered after going through those steps, we need to recenter that clay. Take your left hand and curl it over the top of your piece. Then take your sponge and your right hand and press it down on top. Make sure your arms are anchored into your legs, and this will recenter the clay. We call this the five o'clock fix. Our next step is to pull. When we pull, we take our left hand on the inside and our right hand on the outside with our sponge. Press down all the way to the wheel head into the clay, creating a small bulge, and move your hands up slowly. For your first pull, your right hand is going to do a lot more work than your left hand, working the clay up into a cone. Be careful not to be too aggressive with your first pull, or else you might tear off the top of your clay. After each pull, you will compress your lip. Take your left fingers and curl them over the top of your piece. Then take your sponge in your right hand and press it down on top. This is similar to the five o'clock fix. Compressing your lip will flatten out the top and recenter your clay. 
One thing to be mindful of after each pull is if you have water pooling at the base of your piece. If you have water pooling at the base, the flat platelets of our clay will slowly soak up that water and produce cracking. We don't want that, so always soak up the water that's at the base of your piece. You will repeat the process of pulling at least three to five times with your left hand on the inside, right hand on the outside, with your throwing sponge, press into the clay, moving the walls up slowly. After each pull, make sure you compress your lip. Adding water to the walls is simple enough. Rest your hand where you want to add the water and drip water onto your fingers. It will apply exactly where you need it to. Now proceed to do the process again. Going through pulling will stretch our clay, pinching it ever so slightly and thinning out that clay. Producing thin and consistent walls is the purpose of pulling. Remember after each pull to compress. On this cylinder I'm going to pull four times. Here I am adding a little bit more water to the walls, the inside, smoothing out the lip preparing for my last pull. Pressing down all the way to the wheel head, notice how we create a little bit of a bulge. We're stretching the clay and pinching it between our fingers. Just like the principles of pinching a pinch pot, we're doing the same exact thing, pinching our clay and moving our hands up slowly, thinning out the walls. At this point in the process, you might find that you have uneven walls. One part is too tall and the other is too short. Taking your needle tool, pinch with your left hand ever so slightly. Put your two hands together, spin the wheel slowly, and take your needle tool and draw a line below the lowest point of your lip. As you go through, you slowly turn your needle tool into the clay and eventually it will pass all the way through creating a ring of clay. Here is a closer view of that process. With your two hands together, holding your needle tool, press your needle tool into your clay below the lowest point. Now draw a line allowing it to pass through a few times and it will create that ring of clay for you. Cutting off the top will produce a flat lip to your piece. We want to make sure we round out that lip Using my fingers on my left hand, I'll roll over that edge. While I'm doing that, I can take my sponge in my right hand and rest it on top. This will produce a nice round, soft curve on the lip, which will be great to drink from. This is the same hand position as compressing our lip. After you've completed your pulls, made sure you have a flat lip on the top of your piece that's rounded off. It's time to do a little bit of cleanup. Remove any water that's sitting at the base. Clean up the lip of your pot with your sponge. Then take your sponge and run it over the sides to remove excess slip. Our next step is to shape. Grab your wooden rib to remove the clay skirt at the base of our piece. Holding your wooden rib nice and tight, Press it down to the wheel head and lean it into your piece. Next, take your left hand on the inside and your wooden rib in the right hand on the outside. Stretch out your clay slowly with your left hand, pressing it against the wooden rib on the outside. This will remove some of the slip that's on the outside of your piece. It will also compress your walls making it much easier to remove. You may have to repeat this process a few times to remove all the slip and get the desired shape that you're aiming for. Our first cylinder we're aiming for even, tall, straight, consistent walls. Do your final cleanup by taking your sponge, smooth out the lip of your piece, remove any excess water, and prepare for a final step, which is to take our wire tool cut it off and lift it off the wheel. 
Take your wire tool, slide it all the way down to the ends of your hands, wrap it around your fingers, pressing your thumbs down onto the wheel, and slide it underneath. You only need to do this process one time. Slide it underneath one time. Now take this time to scrape your hands on the side of your bucket or go wash your hands. You need clean, dry hands for lifting your piece off of the wheel. Because we shaped our piece, removing the slip on the outside, and we have clean hands, lifting it off will be a simple task. Gently rest your hands on the outside, lean your piece back towards you just slightly to release it, and place it down onto your bat.